posted Albert Einstein. Thank you all for being a part. You are not audible. Any problem? <clears throat> Divya? And Dr. Santana, is there any problem? Sir, just uh, where are you? Where she has logged from? In fact, she can come here and log if the internet is not clear where the place she is sitting. Is it audible now, sir? Now it is audible, yes. Yes. Thank you all for being a part of today's webinar on microwave assisted extraction, which is one of the new alternative non-conventional green extraction methodology gaining considerable attention during the last decade. My name is Pavitra and I am assistant professor in the Department of Pharmacognosy, NGSM Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences, a constituent college of NIT Dedim to be university. On behalf of college and Department of Pharmacognosy, I welcome respected principal, Professor Dr. Shiyas Shastri, Vice Principal, Professor Dr. Narayana Charyulu, HOD, Department of Pharmacognosy, Dr. Divya Jyoti, today's speaker, Dr. Vivekananda Mandal, other dignitaries, and all the student participants for today's webinar. A very good morning to you all. Today, we are privileged to have with us Dr. Vivekananda Mandal, to share his valuable insights on microwave assisted extraction. Without further ado, I now request Principal Professor Dr. C. S. Shastri to give the opening remark. Over to you, sir. Principal sir, I think you are muted, so you are not audible. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank, thank, thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, thank you, Pavitra, for uh, inviting me to talk a few words of introductory remarks. Uh, uh, congratulations for the entire team because uh, uh, you have selected one exciting topic of uh, my in the case of microwave assisted extraction, uh, a process which is very tricky. We all know. Uh, we have been trying to find out uh, how the botanicals can be effectively extracted using various solvents and still, you know, we have got a lot of challenges. We will not able to get the required compound, required components and so on and so forth. And also some of the solvents what we use are very, very toxic. Maybe, maybe, uh, you know, in our system, we have not yet, uh, uh, tried with the microwave assisted extraction. And uh, we are going to definitely talk about how this uh, microwave assisted extraction will be very useful in uh, uh, trying to uh, Principal, sir, you are muted once again. I think sir, your that... voice is breaking. Principal, oh. sir, has been muted. No, I, I, I unmuted and again it is muted, I think. No, I think okay. that... Now, now it is clear, no? Now it yeah. is clear. Now no? it's audible. Sir. Yeah, uh, yeah. I will make it. Yeah, the, thank you very much, uh, Vyakan Mandal. You are <laughs> correcting me. I hope that it will not again get muted. So I, I was, I was just telling that uh, it is an exciting area because uh, at NGSM IPS we have been using microwave assisted synthesis of uh, synthetic compounds. Uh, but so far, I don't think my colleagues or myself we have used uh, the microwave assisted extraction. 
I am sure that uh, uh, this will open up altogether the new frontier and new possibilities Absolutely. because we do face a lot of uh, problem in isolating the botanicals uh, by conventional methods using different solvents. Uh, many times we may miss uh, the important components or uh, we are not able to separate or sort of, uh, you know, multiple problems are there. Though, though theoretically we say that you from polar to known polar, polar comp solvents you go finally you will get uh, the products what you want but uh, i'm sure that vivekanand is going to throw some new lights about the uh, microwave assisted extraction uh, which uh, i request all my colleagues uh, to really take note of that possibly uh, we can do that and possibly i don't know i'm not very sure because i'm a green hot as far as microwave assisted extraction is concerned uh, it will save a lot of time possibly it will save a lot of uh, what you call uh, solvents and also impurities uh, analysis, uh, impurities also because of the solvents will be less. I'm not very sure. That is what he's going to talk. And uh, Vivekanand, uh, I, I'm sure that you must have gone through what NGSM IPS do. We are a constituent college of NITE deemed to be university, which is uh, ranked 77th in uh, all India, as well as uh, this college NGSM IPS is ranked 44th, 45th in uh, NIRF ranking. So uh, we we have got uh, you know several specialization, but so, uh, of course we don't have the specialization in pharmacognosy. But it doesn't prevent uh, most of our uh, other postgraduates and doctoral students are working in the area of uh, plant-based research. So uh, th that is a broad outline about our institution and our university. And uh, yeah, th th that's that's how it how it is. And I'm so happy that uh, the. Uh, Kanvina Divya Jyoti and uh, uh, Santanu Saha and uh, Pavitra have joined together to uh, organize this uh, wonderful topic. Uh, I, I will be listening to the topic because I am really excited to find out how this microwave assisted extraction is going to work. And before your talk itself, I will have a couple of uh, inquiries which you can uh, uh, throw some light. Uh, wh what are the hardwares required? What are the uh, microwave, uh, you know, uh, the systems required? whether it is ordinary microwave or we have to go for advanced, all those things, if you can throw some light during your talk, perhaps we can uh, develop such system here also. Uh, I'm talking about, not only talking about the theoretical aspect of that, I'm talking about the hardware. If you can share that information also, we can develop it. I'm so glad that you could make it out. And uh, I request the organizers to keep continued uh, association with uh, a very, very eminent man, Vivekananda Mandal. I was just going through his CV. A lot of books and a lot of, uh, you know, I, I think he has got several patents and a lot of publications. And really, it is amazing that uh, the total impact factor, what he has uh, achieved so far in publication, is really, uh, you know, noteworthy and laudable. Uh, with that, I, on my personal behalf and on behalf of uh, our college also, Pavitra has already done uh, to invite you and welcome you to this organization. And in future also, I promise and I look forward for a lot of association with you. Over to you, uh, Pavitra, for the further proceedings of the webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you sir. George Greenstein had quoted, ask a question and you will learn new things. So you started your uh, introduction by questions. So thank you so much for that, sir. Now I request HOD Department of Pharmacognosy, Dr. Divya Jyoti, to introduce the speaker to the gathering. Over to you, madam. Thank you, Pavitra. Uh, I'm uh, very happy to introduce uh, today's uh, eminent speaker, Dr. Vivekananda Mandal. He is uh, working uh, currently as assistant professor in Department of Pharmacy, Guru Gasidas University, Bilaspur. He completed uh, his MPharm in pharmacognosy from IIT BHU in 2007, PhD from Jadavpur University in 2012, and uh, pursued his postdoc biophysics as WRSE fellow from Japan in 2015. His uh, area of interest includes phytoanalysis of botanicals, extraction and purification of botanicals, nutraceuticals, research on antioxidant and essential oil uh, components, and environmental botany. He has got several awards and honors, such as PHU gold medalist, Outstanding Scientist Award from Venus Research Foundation, International Fellowship from WRC Japan for Advanced Studies in Cancer Drug Discovery Using Atomic Force Technology. 
He is also receiver of several projects. He has received from SERP of rupees 40 lakhs, UGC startup grant, and NLDMS from DST of around 9.85 lakhs. Other than this, he also authored several publications in impact factor journals, which is published by Springer, Elsevier, Taylor and Francis, and got a publication of highest impact factor of 13. And he also has 2,500 plus citations and one for impact factor. He also is a receiver of uh, four Indian patent and is also consulted for patent filing and authored several books. With this brief introduction, uh, I will uh, I am here by introducing uh, today's eminent speaker. Thank you, madam. I now request the speaker to take over and share his valuable knowledge with the participants. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question box in your Zoom control panel. I'll bring them up during the presentation and we will also have time for questions at the end. For those in seminar hall, do please feel free to raise your questions by raising your hands. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Pavitra, ma'am, and thank you, Jyoti, madam, for your kind introduction. Uh, uh, Pavitra, madam, can you please brief me about the demography of the audience? Uh, they belong to which class? Are they are PG students or UG students? Sir, uh, uh, actually, we have accommodated in hall. You can see that those students are sitting, those who are uh, third B farm students, UG. And some of the participants are also have joined online. Some of them are staffs and some of the PG students are also there, sir. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. So um, before I begin, let me tell you something about my university, Guru Ghasi Das uh, Vishu Vidyalaya is a central university. And uh, Guru Ghasi Das was a great saint uh, in the central India region. He was born in 1756. And he did a lot of good work in eliminating um, untouchability issues in the society, particularly in this region of Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. So uh, he did a lot of credible work in uh, eliminating untouchability. So uh, this university is established under the name of uh, the great saint Guru Ghasidas Baba. Initially, it was a state university established in 1983. And then in 2009, uh, it was upgraded to Central University. In actually 2009, three universities were upgraded to Central University. Hari Singh Gaur University Sagar, it became Central University. Guru Ghasidas University also became a Central University in 2009. And um, Garhwal, there is a university, Hembati, Nanavati uh, University, that also was upgraded to Central University. So that was a brief introduction about my university. It has 32 departments. And um, pharmacy is one among them. Um, today is also World uh, Blood Donors Day, 14th of June, and a massive blood donation campaign is being organized in our university. After this lecture, I had to move there. Um, blood uh, Donating blood is like, you know, uh, I feel pressing F5 button for your blood. The more you donate blood, the more refresh your blood gets, the more rejuvenated, the more fresh your blood becomes. So I encourage and appeal all to donate your blood. So with this, I, uh, I'll begin with my today's proceeding. I will keep more time for personal interaction with the staff members, with the, uh, with the students. I invite any kind of raw questions from you, uh, raw thoughts that, uh, that comes to your mind after listening to my lecture, all kind of raw thoughts are welcome. You students need not to think that uh, my question could be silly or the expert person who is speaking might, uh, no, might laugh on my question, thinking that what a silly kind of question it is. So I don't believe on all those things, whatever, uh, whatever kind of raw or crude question that comes to your mind, please feel free to ask me because as your principals have said, it's a very tricky topic. You need to be alert, you need to be careful, you need to uh, know the concepts very well. So I have prepared a lot of slides, but definitely I'm not going into each slide. I will not go deep into the theoretical part. I will try to talk as much 
as much as possible from practical sense i will ask few questions i have made some few questionnaires and i will i will be answering those questions and in that particular format by raising questions and by answering them now i'll be trying to deliver the concept to you so <clears throat> let us begin mm. okay so <clears throat> uh this uh, diagram uh, photo that you have seen are taken from google all images most of the images are taken from google some some images are real time images which are uh, from my lab so uh, on the left hand side we can see the sox slate apparatus we are very well aware of it uh, <clears throat> the b farm students might be doing your practicals also uh, uh, sox slate extraction now sox slate extraction has no automation you need to understand there is no automatic process in the soxlate extraction we will never come to know when the extraction has ended or when the extraction has stopped or when we need to stop the extraction there is no red light in that apparatus that will glow after the end of your extraction you have to take a decision on your own that my extraction has come to a standstill or my extraction has ended now it is difficult to identify or difficult to judge uh, when a soxlate extraction comes to an end how will you judge that a soxlate extraction has come to an end or how much time is required to complete a soxlate extraction is it 10 hours 24 hours 6 hours 36 hours one day two day three day four day no fixed protocol is written in the book it depends on your practical sense of experimentation and of course there are few indigenous you call you can call it at desi techniques or indigenous techniques to find out when your ex soxlate extraction has come to an end that i will tell you at the end of the lecture so we need to move to a process which is automated which is reproducible i am talking about a comfort which means push a button and walk away uh, when you pack up a soxlate you cannot just start a soxlate and move out of the lab and come after 6 7 hours you need that is not possible because you need to monitor the soxlate extraction regularly every 15 to 20 minutes you need to inspect that the water supply is proper that the solvent is not drying up in the round bottom flask so you can't just leave the machine and go away so we are looking for a system we are looking for a technology where we can press a button we can program it and we can walk off the room and uh, when we come back uh, we have a cup of coffee at the canteen and when you come back after 7 8 minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes with a chat with your friend your extraction is completed your machine has stopped automatically everything has been separated you are looking for that kind of comfort which soxlate does not allow now this cup of tea indicates that extraction is a phenomenon that we practice everybody practices uh, every uh, everybody practices at their household level whether a male member or female member everybody knows how to prepare a cup of tea and preparing a cup of tea is a classical example of extraction so uh, but when you prepare a cup of tea our entire focus goes to the taste of the tea that we are going to enjoy we are not very much concentrated in, uh, very much thoughtful about the process because the, making a tea is a follows a standard process similarly when we talk about extraction uh, pg students or chemistry students or pharmacology students they also work with plant drug and the starting material of a plant drug research is an extract if you don't have an extract in hand you cannot perform anything neither you can perform pharmacological studies neither you can perform phytochemical analysis neither you can prepare phyto formulations you can't do anything you need to have an extract first to have an extract you need to have an extraction process now when it comes to extraction process we don't take it very seriously we generally ask our supervisor we generally ask our teacher which process to follow our teacher or our supervisor says follow the soxlate process maybe the follow the maceration process we don't bother about the disadvantages associated with soxlate we don't bother that 
how salicylate can harm our phyto constituents because in the later stage we are very much you know focus regarding pharmacological studies we are very much focus regarding fractionation and isolation our major major attention is focused in that area fractionation isolation bioassay pharmacological studies may be formulation preparation may be nanoparticle preparation we are not at all bothered about extraction we take extraction as a very casual step that uh, we have a thumb rule we can put up a salicylate and uh, our job is done but that's not the case <clears throat> these are certain diagrams i i would not explain to this this is a machine that i have this is a perfectly automated computer controlled salicylate apparatus it cost around 16 lakhs it costed me 16 lakhs around 4 years ago uh, it is uh, manufactured by buki switzerland this is a computer controlled salicylate now you pack your drug it will take only one hour to one and a half hour to complete the extraction you can program it depending upon which solvent you are using what kind of plant material it is you can program it and start the machine and go out of the room have a cup of tea have a chat with your friend and when you come after one hour when you come back you will find that your extraction is complete your extract is dried your solvent is recovered and it is safely kept so your extraction is completed in the sense it is dried like you get a dried extract your solvent is also recovered so it's a very sophisticated instrument but my talk is not with that this is just to sensitize you regarding instrumentation now let us come <clears throat> uh, to a very basic theory i am also keeping a watch on the uh, on my mobile phone to keep a record of the time so that i don't consume much time uh, how does extraction proceeds? The first step in extraction is desorption. This circle you can see, this is a plant drug particle. So this is a particle, it could be a leaf particle, it could be a root particle. The first step is desorption. Desorption means detachment, separation of your phytoconstituent from the matrix. Because your phytoconstituent, your let's say gallic acid, quercetin, rutin, all these common phytoconstituents or uncommon phytoconstituents, they are attached to the matrix with a weak bond. So first of all, we need to detach that bonding, that is separate the phytoconstituent from the matrix. Once it is separated, the phytoconstituent need to slowly diffuse. If you follow my cursor, A is the detachment of the uh, phytoconstituent from the matrix. And then the matrix has, sorry, then the phytoconstituent has to traverse or travel, travel through the complex cellular pores or complex cellular channels of the matrix. Matrix means botanical material. Complex cellular pores, there would be a lot of complex cellular channels or cellular pores. So it has to travel through those zigzag complex cellular channels and reach to the outer surface outer vegetative surface of the plant uh, powder. Once it reaches to the outer surface, which is C, if you follow my matrix uh, cursor, then it needs to dissolve into the external solvent D. D is the, your external solvent. So basically there are three steps. That is detachment of the matrix from the, uh, sorry, detachment of the phytoconstituent from the matrix followed by diffusion of the phytoconstituent through the cellular channels to the external surface of the botanical powdered material. And then once it reaches to the external surface, it has to solubilize itself into the external solvent. This is the entire configuration or route of uh, or channel of extraction. Now, this B part, diffusion part is the rate limiting step in the extraction process. That means the longer the, it takes for the phytoconstituent to diffuse through the complex channel to the external surface, the longer will be the extraction time. If you can reduce this extract diffusion time, you will be speeding up the extraction process. Diffusion is the rate limiting step which will control the entire reaction, entire phenomenon. If you can fasten this rate limiting step, you will be fastening the extraction process. Microwave assisted extraction exactly does the same thing. 
i'll show you a pictorial representation this is a diagram that we have made we have published this diagram in in one of our research paper now in soxlate you can see these green dots are your phyto constituents gallic acid rutin ferulic acid naringenin chlorogenic acid etc etc blah 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 these are your, all your phyto constituent if you follow my cursor uh, these are your green dots and these green dots has to come out from this particle this is a plant drug particle has to come out from this particle using this white color zigzag channel <clears throat> so coming out from this white color zigzag channel is a very tedious process very lengthy process that is why soxlate takes a long time so once it comes out slowly you can see that the external solvent this gray color is the external solvent it becomes green now in microwave what happens these zigzag channels are directly broken down by the effect of heat you can see these channels has been broken down these zigzag channels has been broken down into a straight path straight route and now the phyto constituent no longer has to travel through those complex zigzag channels it has got a straight route with through that straight direct channel it can come out to the external surface so since this straight route has been formed it takes less time for the phyto constituent to come out from the internal core of the matrix that is internal core of the plant drug to the external solvent <coughs> now how does this uh, uh, this straight or zigzag channels are broken down uh, when you apply microwave your uh, solvent gets heated up your plant powdered material also gets heated up your plant material absorbs microwave gets heated up there is slight moisture present in your plant drug that moisture absorbs microwave heats up and tries to evaporate from inside when it tries to evaporate from inside a pressure build up takes place inside the cellular pores or cellular channels because of that pressure build up the cellular channels or pores are ruptured that is one mechanism second mechanism is because of the direct heating of the plant powder suspended in the solvent the plant powder is also heated the solvent is also heated because of this heating the cellulose content of the cell wall which provides rigidity to the cell wall and also prevents the solvent from entering because it is a tight material it provides strength and rigidity we know that and it also prevents the solvent from entering into the plant matrix and delays the process of extraction that cellulose gets heated up gets dehydrated and degraded when the cellulose gets degraded the <coughs> strength of the cell wall reduces the cell wall becomes compromised when the cell wall strength is reduced the cell wall becomes weak and it can be easily broken down when the cell wall breaks down minute ruptures or pores will develop through those ruptures uh the phyto constituent can easily leak out so that is how microwave generally works it is just like drilling when you drill a wall uh to put up some nail or some carpentry work you are drilling on the wall similarly through microwaves we perform a drilling operation on the plant material we rupture the ce uh, cellulose we make fractures or pores on the cell wall because of internal heating and then uh, <clears throat> uh, through that ruptures or pores the phyto constituent will come out i'll show you some real time images of the ruptures and fractures this is uh, this is the microwave which is present in our lab which has been manufactured by catalyst system pune uh, they are our industry partners and they provide uh, they keep maintenance of this instrument in fact we have uh, uh, two models uh, uh, of microwave this is this two belongs to the same model this is one model another model also i have now <clears throat> 
see what happens in a normal heating when you heat uh, uh, in a round bottom flask using a heating mantle your heating mantle will be heated up first then your glass apparatus will get heated up first that glass when the glass apparatus gets heated up then the water which is near to the layer of that heating mantle will heat up first a convection current will develop and that convection current will heat up the entire water or entire solvent so it's a slow process in microwave there is no such thing glass is absolutely transparent to microwave so glass is not going to absorb your microwave your microwaves will hit the solvent directly will hit the plant particle suspended in the solvent directly so simultaneously at the same time both your solvent no matter at the center at the corners at the sides no matter at the, uh, where the location of the solvent is all the solvent and all the plant particles suspended in the solvent will get heated up simultaneously at the same time without any loss to the environment and glass is not going to absorb any microwave so that is another advantage now let us come to some facts and figures <clears throat> we have written a review article it was published in 2016 and it was published in trends in analytical chemistry it has an impact factor of 12 now um, we have seen from 2005 to 2015 in this 10 years we have seen that 2260 articles were published in scopus scopus database it was present in scopus database uh, which is related with microwave assisted extraction i do not say that it is related with plant drug but it could be related with chemistry also it could be related with environmental science also so 2200 articles were published with my, uh, based on microwave extraction out of this 200 2200 articles 1157 article almost 50% of the articles rela were related with plant drug extraction so <clears throat> what are the components in microwave uh, what are the areas domain using microwave you can extract essential oil use sorry using microwave you can extract phenolics flavonoids and antioxidant using microwave you can extract uh, uh, marine drugs phytoplanktons or certain marine components marine drugs certain algae you can extract uh, certain constituents from uh, marine products you can extract pesticide which is very tough to extract using a soxlet you can extract pesticide from plant material from soil sample and rest is miscellaneous so majority of the share 39% was related to the extraction of phenolics and flavonoids and antioxidant from plant material now let us see which plant part is is very much in use we have surveyed many uh, research papers and we found that leaves are used maximum not only for microwave assisted extraction but also for normal drug discovery from natural products or for classical pharmacognosy extraction also using soxlet leaves are preferred very much for bioassay guided fractionation or drug discovery from natural products leaves are preferred maximum then is bark then rhizomes then roots the reason why leaves are preferred is because leaves a uh, usage of leaf does not harm your biodiversity because you need to collect leaves in kg maybe 100 kg maybe in tons if you are a uh, small medium scale manufacturer so if you collect that much amount of leaves uh, the plants has the capacity to grow them back so if you collect roots it will kill the plant but if you collect leaves uh, the in due course of time the plants will grow the leaves back and plants will survive the plants will not die off so uh, working with leaves gives you that added advantage so we have found that researchers have given preference to working with leaves <coughs> now this is a good news countries which are working maximum on microwave assisted extraction china spain and india stands at the third position so india is very aware with regarding microwave assisted extraction we are advanced than united states and other european countries regarding microwave assisted extraction 
Now, when it comes to using microwave for the extraction of phenolics and flavonoids and antioxidants, we see that the ranking has changed. China first position, India second position. The reason for this is that China and India has a strong traditional medicine background. China has traditional Chinese medicine. India has Ayurvedic knowledge. So we have a lot of medicinal plants. We have a rich biodiversity. We can explore those medicinal plants for the extraction of phenolics and flavonoids and antioxidant compounds using microwave. And that is what Indian researchers have done. So India occupies the second position when it comes to extraction of antioxidant phenolics and flavonoids using microwave. Now, having said about this introductory part, let us begin uh, that how to start with microwave. <clears throat> now, I have framed certain question. What shall be the strategy for plant selection? Now, I want to perform microwave assisted extraction. Maybe a MPharm students want to perform that uh, uh, um, dissertation work, a PhD students want to perform that what should, should be my strategy to select a medicinal plant for the extraction using microwave? Never select a new medicinal plant, new in the sense you have gone to the jungle or maybe you have gone to a, a tribal area and you have collected ethnobotanical information regarding a medicinal plant and you found that medicinal plant is not explored and you want to explore that medicinal plant. Do not use such kind of medicinal plants for using microwave. Always use known medicinal plants, medicinal plants which has commercial importance, which has therapeutic importance, which has identified phytoconstituents. Use those medicinal plants for microwave assisted extraction and try to develop a method using microwave for the large scale extraction of the biomarker present in that plant. That would be an ideal objective. Pre extraction issues or any sample pre treatment before starting the microwave extraction, do I need to perform any sample pre treatment? Do I need to treat my plant sample? powder the plant sample, use dry plant material, powder it and try to absorb, keep it soaked or immersed in the solvent in which you are performing microwave. If you are performing microwave using ethanol, methanol or water, try before the microwave assisted extraction, it is always advisable that you soak the plant material in that solvent for at least 10 minutes, if not at least five minutes. 10 minutes would be preferable. Keep it soaked in 10 minutes so that your plant drug or powder plant material becomes hydrated. It absorbs the moisture, it absorbs the solvent. And if it becomes hydrated, then when you perform microwave, your plant material can absorb the microwave, will generate heat from inside, and that heat will bring about quick rupture of the cellular structures and will help in the extraction process. How the microwave is to be performed and which factors needs to be optimized. See, sock slate, we need not to bother. You pack the sock slate, switch on the heating mantle and forget it. <coughs> but microwave is not like that. You need to be alert. There are many factors, microwave power, time, temperature, particle size, solvent volume. You need to optimize them. If you do not run your microwave in optimized condition, your all phytoconstituents will be degraded. Even five second extra exposure will degrade your phytoconstituent. So your entire research in microwave is based on optimization of the conditions involved in microwave assisted extraction. So you have to make some strategy so that you can optimize the condition. What shall be the time of extraction? Nobody knows what shall be the time of extraction. Do not follow what others are doing. If I have said that I have, I require 10 minutes to extract phenolics from this plant material, your plant would be different. Compounds present in that plant material is different. My plant is different. If my plant requires 10 minutes exposure, your plant will never it's not, there is no guarantee that your plant will also require 10 minutes. You need to find out the right time. You have to try various exposures, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, <coughs> and then find out which is the best. Do not copy blindly from other research papers <coughs> because the optimum condition will change with the plant material. 
soft is the plant material shorter is the exposure time harder is the plant material more exposure time is required there are many other factors also <clears throat> can any optimized operation parameter reported in research paper be adopted as such no it cannot be adopted if i am reporting an optimum condition for turmeric then that condition is applicable only for turmeric if you are using raulfia do not apply the conditions which has been reported for turmeric do not apply the same microwave extraction conditions for raulfia for neem for tulsi every plant material will have different different extraction condition why because every plant material has a combination of different phyto constituents and each phyto constituent they react with microwave or they get sensitized towards microwave in a different way just for example <clears throat> during the covid time somebody fell very seriously ill needs to be hospitalized somebody many people lost their life and many people did not have any symptoms at all they were suffering from covid but they were absolutely asymptomatic many people were moderately ill ghar pe hi at home only they became okay there was no need for hospitalization some people had mild symptoms maybe headache maybe slight fever within one day within two day everything was fine so everybody's body is different it is not that only older people died in covid many younger people also died in the covid uh, second wave so it is not that only older people will get badly affected younger people or middle aged people also got badly affected and there are many older people who did not get any symptoms at all so every body is different so we all are human being but our in internal physiology internal response system is totally different that is why we all have behaved differently towards covid during the covid vaccination many people after the vaccine many people got fever but many people did not get so it all depends how your body is sensitized towards that vaccine or towards that disease Similarly, <laughs> similarly every plant material will not react with microwaves in the same way so do not copy the uh, reports uh, of other plant material and try to apply it in your plant you have to develop your own optimum condition for your plant now the question is after when you prepare you have got the extract up from microwave further purification is required no further purification is not required you will get it in good form you can inject that extract directly into the chromatographic uh, system into hplc or hptlc <clears throat> how can the decision be reached that the uh, regarding the optimum condition how will you find out Uh, that which condition is the best you have to test many conditions the microwave power microwave uh, you have to test the check the temperatures uh, you have to check the uh, irradiation time or exposure time and you have to uh, uh, put a trial and error combination and you have to see at which combination you are getting the maximum yield of the target component your target component would be your targeted biomarker of that particular plant material so the condition in which you will get the maximum yield of the biomarker will be considered as the optimum condition how can it be ensured that the microwave radiation on the plant matrix does not alter the bioactivity now there are fears that since we are using electromagnetic radiation the biological activity may be compromised the yield can be more but the biological activity can be lesser because there could be some alteration in the structural component that is not the case these are only fears but we have proved that at the optimum condition not only the yield is maximum but also the biological activity is also maximum so whatever extract we get we check the antioxidant activity and if the antioxidant activity is better than the succinate produced extract 
then we can conclude that the biological activity of the compound uh, of the extract produced from microwave is also high because more con extraction takes place more constituents are extracted so you will get a higher biological activity how can the mechanism be understood the mechanism has to be understood by uh, electron microscopy i will show you some structures some photographs which will help you to understand the mechanism now this is the flow chart how microwave assisted extraction will continue it would be difficult for the b farm students to understand i i i acknowledge that fact because all these things are not mentioned in your syllabus and these are more towards research oriented but take it as a sensitization take it as a general knowledge this is a new process uh, uh, accept this as a as a general knowledge regarding extraction of extraction and purification science Be otherwise you will face difficulty in understanding this because it is more directed towards research but i'll try to keep it as simple as possible now these are the factors you need to optimize extraction time microwave power pre leaching time pre leaching time is the time for which the plant material is soaked in the solvent before the microwave begins uh, extraction cycle um, matrix characteristics means powder size so we generally start with 1 g or 2 g depending upon how much loading is possible and <clears throat> give microwave radiation optimize the condition optimize the radiation time you'll get the extract check the quality of the extract check the quality of extract means check how much biomarker is present check the biological activity of that extract and find out the right combination which will give you the maximum biological activity and maximum yield of phytoconstituent then always compare the yield obtained by microwave with soxlate extraction if you do not compare you will not be able to get the true picture this is the diagram that we have drawn take the plant material powder it uh, perform microwave get the extract this is the dried extract and after getting the dried extract perform hplc or hptlc uh, etc to check the quality of the extract okay so <clears throat> these are certain golden rules that we have proposed and we have published it in a very high impact journal the rule number 1 microwave power and irradiation time are inversely proportional if you increase the power your extraction time will be less if you decrease the power your extraction time will be more time more ka matlab hai time more means 10 to 15 minutes not more than that it is not 1 hour 2 hours or 3 hours hardly it's an exercise of 10 to 15 minutes but if you increase the microwave power there is maximum chances of degradation so it's a very tricky situation you have to balance it just like balancing salt and what uh, salt and sugar or balancing the exact amount of sugar in your tea it is just like that so it you have to balance the microwave power and extraction time then after extraction whatever biomass you will get that biomass should be tested whether exhaustive extraction has been performed or not b farm students if you are working on an extraction method you must always prove that the extraction method is exhaustive exhaustive means it has performed 100% extraction no phytoconstituents are remaining in the biomass after the extraction that needs to be proven now <clears throat> i will not go into these rules because b farm students will not understand let me show you some real time pictures uh, phases of extraction you will get major three phases in microwave extraction first is a slow phase where the extraction is very slow then there is a second phase is a sharp increase you can see very sharp increase the extraction is reaching to its peak height after it has reached to its peak height extraction uh, the yield of the uh, component will start degrading there could be a slow degradation or there could be a sharp degradation like this if you follow my cursor so three phases uh, slow rise then a very sharp rise and then degradation so you need to stop your extraction in this peak time you should not enter into this degradation phase otherwise it will be a big loss 
so you need to locate this time at what time your extraction is peaking so peaking means reaching to the maximum height stop the extraction at that particular place so that you don't enter into the degradation phase all these things you will do practice in your research work now these are certain images real time images you know <clears throat> i was talking about the cellular channels the cellular channels are broken down this is a microwave image follow my cursor b b is a microwave image <clears throat> sorry this is a microwave image see these are the cellular channels pores has been created from these pores the phytoconstituent will come out and this is a normal sample you can see this no, this is a normal untreated sample pores are very small and see what has happened to these pores such big pores just like caves in the mountain from these big pores your phytoconstituent will come out these are more pictures this is a uh, soxlate this is maceration and see this big pores has been created in the cell wall when such big pores are created due to microwave heating it becomes very easy for the target compound to come out and your extraction gets completed within 10 to 15 minutes you don't have to wait for long hours see again a beautiful image this is a mentha oil gland we have published this in a journal which has an impact factor of 10 so this is a oil gland of a healthy plant material this is the oil gland after performing clavenger apparatus extraction that is hydro distillation and look at the oil gland using microwave extraction the oil gland is fractured somebody has cut its throat see the complete oil gland has been opened follow my cursor and when this oil gland gets fra fractured the oil can be extracted out very easily <clears throat> this is again a very complex thing we from students may not understand i'll skip that part because i want to invest more time on questioning now are you aware of uh, when you carry out extraction the first question that you ask to your teacher or to your supervisor sir or ma'am which solvent i am going to use am i going to use methanol or ethanol or water if i ask you a question can you perform extraction without using solvent is it possible to perform extraction without using any solvent no solvent not even water i will use the answer is yes we have invented a process using microwave where you can perform extraction without using solvent imagine how much expenditure you can save no solvent is used so you don't need evaporation step nothing no contamination from solvent you don't require a single drop of solvent for performing extraction using our method that we have developed we have got an indian patent also and we have published in a very high impact journal now we if i tell you a very interesting thing you perform a soxlate extraction and your soxlate extraction is responsible for melting of glaciers at the antarctica you will be laughing at me that this really is a very mad kind of statement that how come soxlate is responsible for melting of glaciers glaciers in antarctica how come running a soxlate is contributing to global warming because soxlate does not release any fumes soxlate does not release any pollution but that is not the case soxlate is responsible for global warming soxlate is environmentally polluting because soxlate uh, makes use of huge amount of energy because you have to perform heat operation for more than sometimes 24 hours or 36 hours so you are consuming lot of heat energy so i have carried out an energy audit uh, you must be knowing uh, financial audits administrative audits i have carried out an energy audit and i have calculated that if a soxlate runs for 24 hours how much energy it uses to produce that much energy how much coal needs to be burned and if that much coal is burned how much carbon dioxide is 
eliminate how much carbon dioxide is liberated in the atmosphere because we get electricity by burning coal i have calculated uh, if you perform a succulent extraction 1080 <clears throat> sorry 10000 grams of carbon dioxide are liberated for the production of 1 gram of extract and only 698 grams of carbon dioxide are liberated for microwave assisted extraction you will not understand this figure but i will give you a small example 10000 grams of carbon dioxide is equivalent to the pollution created by a car which is running at an average speed for 77 km that means if you are if you are operating a succulent extraction for 24 hours you are creating a pollution which is created by a car running for 77 kilometers that much pollution you are contributing if you are running to succulent and these are all standard calculation based on environmental agency data disadvantages no everything is not good about microwave there are certain bad things also so microwave it is you need strong optimization blindly you cannot uh, carry out any kind of experimentation secondly do not prefer a new plant material always select an well established plant uh, drug have, having a well known is everything okay from my end okay yes sir yes, yes sir. now <clears throat> coming to the end of the lecture i will try to reserve What more time for, for you let's just uh, unmute yourself so these are my research force uh, uh, in this photograph you can see my uh, senior research fellow kavi bhushan singh chauhan uh, harneet who has already passed out phd uh, under me kamal uh, who had already passed out phd yes, under me this is my lab uh, this is uh, if you follow my cursor this is my chamber where i sit and attached with my chamber is my lab <clears throat> these are my uh, another two phd students who just got their phd degrees these are my international collaborators uh, from france indonesia and south africa i closely work with them uh there i have produced uh, around 15 more than 15 publications only related to microwave the highest impact factor 13 i have produced four patents related to microwave out of which one patent says how you can perform extraction without using solvent and these are certain books uh, i have authored a book on herbal drug technology b farm six semester student can use it it is a question answer book you uh, <clears throat> Uh, there are two marks question five marks question and 10 marks question with beautiful answers written in it ready made answers written in it then uh, there is a book on essential of botanical extraction there is a book on patents m farm students can use it because as per the pci new syllabus a lot of patenting chapters are there in m farm uh, the book has been also authored by uh, myself and my uh, senior research fellow who is doing phd under me mr kavi bhushan singh uh these are my post doctoral fellows just for an entertainment purpose this is my first day in japan i am having a lunch with my post doctoral japanese uh, professor and you can see this small bowl containing rice so you might be surprised that this small amount of rice people eat there and you may think that this may not be sufficient to fulfill your hunger but believe me that the, you cannot eat this complete rice also uh because this is a kind of different variety a small amount your stomach gets full and imagine eating rice with a fork see you can see my plate i'm using a fork to eat a rice they don't use spoon there uh, my professor is using a chopstick i could not use a chopstick that was my first day in japan i would spill the rice all over my body so i preferred using fork so try in your home to eat rice with fork you will you will be completely frustrated with that uh, this is a prawn i was having uh, and uh, this is uh, eaten raw in japan this is raw from the <clears throat> pacific ocean eaten raw uncooked it is not cooked it is eaten raw and believe me it is extremely tasty as soon as you put in your mouth it will start melting just like butter 
uh, this is how it looks in the winter season completely black and white and all snow all over snow this is an octopus i have eaten an octopus when i was in japan very tasty uh, very sticky um, this is a piece of octopus leg only so eaten raw mind it this is not eaten cooked this is eaten raw japanese people they eat it raw so very sticky you have to chew it for almost 15 20 minutes <clears throat> but tasty uh, this is my picture in front of, in front of kyoto university which is uh, uh, in the top 50 world ranking uh, if you imagine how a vegetable stall looks like in japan this is a vegetable stall you will get cabbage you will get broccoli banana oranges everything okay and <clears throat> i am also a amateur photographer also i practice photography these are the some flower photography is my passion and uh, flower photography and food photography these are the photographs i have clicked with my dslr camera and edited in my photoshop studio um, these are food photography um, this is a potato only this is some sweets uh, i have photo just photographs you see in swiggy and zomato i i this is my hobby i do it in my free time so i'll end my lecture with that and i will invite if you have any questions uh, on microwave you can ask me because one hour is not sufficient to teach you everything and i understand that b farm students will not capture everything because that is these are not included in your syllabus but i tried my best to at least sensitize you and in the near future if your college organizes some hands on training then i can visit your college and i can give you practical demonstration so this uh, the basic objective of this lecture was to sensitize you uh, towards microwave so that your interest level increases thank you very much over to you to the organizers sir i have one questions yeah uh, sir in that uh, microwave that the solvent toxicity will be not a be right sir as per your knowledge you are telling no solvent can be used for making a uh, like extraction for microwave yeah that, that is a very uh, different technique uh, if you are not using uh, solvent then there is no question of toxicity there is no question of contamination also hmm so uh, that's a totally different kind of procedures used for extracting juices and volatile oil okay so uh, we fire microwave we rupture the oil glands and take out the juice or take out the oil using gravity so no solvent at all so if you are not using any solvent there is no question of contamination there is no question of toxicity it's only for the uh, extraction of volatile oil you are using that it is uh, for volatile oil and for uh, juices aqueous juices and one more thing sir you told some sort of drawback what is the major drawback of microwave extraction sir see the major drawback is you need optimization as i said blindly somebody you know you cannot follow any procedure soxlate you don't need optimization pack your soxlate apparatus forget it let it run until unless the color in the siphon tube many practices the same thing color in the siphon tubes faded so starts fading you keep running the soxlate that is one minor technique uh, uh, people use to find out um, <clears throat> when the soxlate extraction comes to an end but then the problem is that many uh, uh, phyto compounds are colorless so colorless compound you cannot identify so in uh, microwave the biggest disadvantage is you need to optimize you cannot blindly select a process from the paper from the literature and apply it with your plant drug not possible you need to carry out the full fledged experiment and optimize the process that is one at disadvantage second even 1 minute or 30 seconds of extra exposure can spoil your extract or degrade your extract you need to be very very alert in soxlate you have performed soxlate for 3 hours you perform soxlate for 3 hours 10 minutes doesn't makes a big difference not at all a difference 3 hours and 3 hours 10 minutes in soxlase is not at all a difference but 3 minutes in microwave and 3 uh, minutes 20 seconds in microwave it's a big difference 3 minutes extra 20 second exposure can spoil your extract can spo degrade your phyto constituent so you need to be very sharp and precise with uh, optimization these are certain disadvantages and optimization is your research your entire research with microwave is based on playing with the 
uh, extraction condition and finding out the right combination. Next question, please. The session is open for questions. Sir, you uh, can say optimization is a one shot of project, right, sir? Yes, optimize all projects on microwave, all research on microwave is based on optimization. Uh, today, there is Dr. Rishikesh, I mean, uh, you, uh, yeah, you showed it. Uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, Pardon me, I didn't get the question. The study of the department. You are not happy with him? Principal, sir. I think principal, sir, has some questions. Uh, yeah, voice I, is I, not clear. Yeah, yeah, audible, sir, but voice is not uh, clear. Clarity is not there. No, I was talking to some of the, the phone call. Anyway, right. I, I, I just have one question, uh, Vivekanan. What is that? Uh, who is that? So, so, sorry, being a principal, I have got some other, uh, you know, non-technical questions. I, I just wanted to find out who is the supplier of that uh, micro uh, microwave, this one, synthesizer, what you have. You showed some pictures, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is one thing. <laughs> Second thing, you also showed uh, the picture of one 16 lakhs worth, uh, micro, you know, extractor. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what are the advantages of? I, I'm talking about the building up of uh, the infras required for that. Okay. The other question is, uh, uh, thermolabile substances will not get uh, harmed from uh, micro and synthesis? Yeah. Okay, I'm noted down your question. One by one, I will answer them. First, building on infrastructure. So, uh, our microwave supplier is Mr. Shrikant. Uh, um, I, I, I can share uh, his number to them. And uh, uh, he's a fabricator also. Uh, I, I give him my designs to him that I want this feature, this feature, I want the outlet here, I want the inlet in this pattern, I want the loading vessel in this shape, um, uh, I want this kind of uh, arrangement, configuration, uh, I give, because I'm working in this uh, area for the past more than 10 years and uh, uh, now I have started building my own designs. And uh, I give them uh, my designs to him, and uh, he makes his uh, according to my designs. How and of course, how much it costs? We can approximately, approximately <coughs> give or take. Costing could be uh, no a standard microwave extraction might cost you two point five lakhs maybe. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, a very Any standard uh, uh, feature, and uh, yeah. some add-on features can get to four lakhs. Okay, okay. Hmm. okay. So right. 2.5 to 4, 4.5, it can vary depending upon yeah. what configuration and features you are looking for, yeah. like temperature control, uh, exhaust system. Uh, these are certain advanced features, the IR sensors. Yeah. So that will add up to your cost. But, but a basic cost could be around 2.5 lakhs. Yeah, I look forward to you. Uh, my people, will, uh, Pavitra or somebody will contact. We would like to go for one set things. I will uh, uh, you know, discuss these specifications later. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And second question is on thermolabile. So we yeah. have a patent on extract extraction of thermolabile constituents also. So thermolabile constituents are absolutely safe in microwave. They are not safe in sock slate because uh, uh, if the students and the other uh, faculty members, if they observe phyto constituents after uh, during sock slate extraction, the solvent siphons from the thimble and enters into the round bottom flask. If you see the picture here, if you follow my cursor, and these phytoconstituents are actually present in the round bottom flask. And this round bottom flask is in direct contact with the heating mantle and keeps on boiling for an extended period of time, say maybe long hours. If you boil your phytoconstituent for such long hours, you are going to get dead bodies of phytoconstituent and nothing else. And then you will blame your isolation process that uh, uh, isolation uh, could not be carried out uh, uh, and we could not end up with any kind of new compound. Actually, you have killed your all your possibility of getting a new compound during slate only because you are subjecting the phyto constituent to boiling solvent for a long period of time and all your possibility of ending up with a new compound gets killed at that very first stage itself. So microwaves will give you that added advantage that they will keep you keep your thermolabile phytoconstituent absolutely safe because it is it will offer you a controlled heating. You can 
control the heating you can control the amount of uh, microwave to be fired so that lesser heat medium heat or more heat can be generated hmm. so control heating will keep your thermolabile well constituent safe that's a different concept i don't want to get into that concept but this is a superficial answer but i have developed a model whereby you can keep your phyto constituent safe so your phyto constituent will be absolutely safe and if you carry out a well planned uh, isolation process your possibility of ending up with a new compound also increases because no phyto constituents are killed in the microwave extraction process over to you sir yeah thank you thank you i think it was a elaborate explanation uh, uh, i am and the last question is uh, with your uh, micro one you can use all solvents uh, any solvents you can use uh safety so, issues are not there uh just hold on i am getting a call from my office i'll take this call and i'll come back to you ha uh, mishra ji ha ha boli wo aayi hui hai lekin ha ha lekin main to abhi office pahuncha nahi hu mujhe aane mein thoda samay lagega hmm unko mera number de dijiye theek hai aur ha number de dijiye aur उनका नाम उनसे कहिए कि मुझे एक एसएमएस कर दे आई करके व्हाट्सएप कर दे कुछ भी कर दे है, मैं उनसे कॉल करके बुलाऊंगा क्योंकि देना दे, दे तो आप देंगे लेकिन उनको समझाना पड़ेगा थोड़ा ठीक है मैंने उनसे कहा था कि कॉल करके आए मैं एक्चुअली ऑनलाइन लेक्चर ले रहा हूँ ठीक है करा दीजिए बात एक Uh, sorry i had a call from my office uh, yeah uh, i forgot your question sir sorry you, you, uh, no uh, I, i i'm just was asking whether you can use all the solvents any solvent yeah 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 okay okay remember the safe safety issues yeah you can use only polar solvents non polar solvents like chloroform uh, petroleum ether hexane uh, hexane petroleum ether extremely non polar uh these will not heat up under microwave only polar solvents gets heated up under microwave and of course in plant drug extraction we use only polar solvents only methanol ethanol hydro alcoholic or aqueous mm. so only polar solvent non polar solvent cannot be used okay, okay. and the amount of solvent or the volume of solvent is very less the minimum criteria requirement is that your powdered plant material should be immersed in the solvent yeah it should be just immersed correct hmm. okay okay thank you i'm done <clears throat> any other questions see actually microwave is a vast vast area and uh, whatever i have gathered knowledge from in from my 10 years of experience it is not possible to share each and every concept within this one year time period one hour time period but that's take it uh, take students can take this lecture as a sensitization one and in in future you uh, know when you have hands on training programs then actually people can come down to your place and can demonstrate how this mechanism work work how this uh, step by step demonstration is very much essential theoretical explanation may not give you a clear picture any questions from the uh, students uh, point of view uh, thank you so much sir we are really grateful for the time and effort you took to share your thoughts knowledge and also for some entertainment at the end Uh, this was one of the best talk i have attended the principle of microwave extraction was very clear probably because you explained it in the simplest possible way extraction without solvents is a very exciting approach because reactivity and adjusting ph is really a challenge when solvents are used sometimes carboxylic acid groups present get ethylated or methylated when methanol or ethanol is used peroxide peroxidation adduct formation etc so understanding optimization of course requires hands on experience but the insights you provided uh, will surely be the foundation for us to explore further sir we will go ahead uh, if there are any some any questions the session is open for questions or else can i share your contact details sir so that we can interact with you personally 
Yes, my contact details was there on my yes, sir, in yes, my sir. first slide itself. Yes, sir. So can I share it with others? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. And uh, so that we can even carry out some work in collaboration sometime in future. And this uh, platform is uh, has a very broad spectrum of audience, sir. So it would be better if we could interact with you personally to get our doubts cleared or uh, know more about microwave extraction. Yes, yes. In fact, uh, um, PG students and PhD students would be more beneficial because B farm yes, students, uh, their thought process are limited within the boundaries of the books only. So uh, B farm students, they get happy when they receive certain ready-made notes or PowerPoint presentation because they, they think in that way. Uh, PG students, they, they tend to come out from the boundaries of the book and they try to explore the things. They try to experiment it out. Uh, and when you go into that phase of experimentation, exploring, uh, satisfying your curiosity, uh, then you will find such uh, topics and such talk more interesting. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, is there anything else you wanted to cover up before a wrap up? See, microwave can be taken up as you know, MFARM projects and PhD projects, for example, uh, developing uh, development and method development and optimization of microwave assisted extraction of reserpine from Raulfia. Uh, microwave assisted extraction from XYZ compound from uh, ABC plant material. So such kind of... Uh, um, okay, I have a question from second semester M farm to everyone. Sir, can we use fresh plant material? Yes, you can use fresh plant material. Uh, there are a lot of strategies in microwave assisted extraction. If you are using our uh, method of extraction without using solvent, then the mandatory requirement is fresh plant material because fresh plant material has a lot of moisture content and we are targeting that particular moisture uh, uh, in microwave heating. So that moisture serves as the solvent for us, the natural moisture present in it. So microwave without solvent, you must use fresh plant material. Microwave with solvent, you should use dry plant material. So that somebody had asked me, sir, as you said, all plants and species are different. How to optimize? Yes. How to optimize means as a thumb rule, uh, plants belonging to a particular family will have common characteristics. So plants belonging to leguminosia family, plants belonging to rubiaceae family have, will have certain common characteristics. For example, you know, in family also, in our family, um, uh, my facial configuration, my eyes, my nose would be very much similar to my uh, first cousin, brother, sisters, uh, my own siblings, my cousin, brothers and sisters, because we belong to the same family. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, some kind of facial similarity would be there with our cousin, brother, sisters also. So similarly, plants also have the similar kind of configuration of phytoconstituents if they belong to the same family. So uh, what we have observed is that suppose if I tell that seven minute is optimum for a particular plant um, uh, and uh, 200 watt power and seven minute of exposure is suitable for the extraction of curcumin from turmeric. So the plants belonging to that particular family, say leguminosae family or rubiaceae family are likely to have or may have the similar condition. So we, if we have found out the optimum condition of a particular plant to extract the phytoconstituent from that particular plant, then the family to which that plant belongs so other plants belonging to the same family may also have the same similar phytoconstituents and will also have similar optimum condition. So family to family, uh, within the family, the optimum microwave conditions may remain similar. And you need to, um, pharmaceutics people say, uh, pharmaceutics people, they apply a lot of m pharmaceutics people, they, you will be applying 
fractional factorial design um, uh, central composite design and many other such designs for pre optimization of pre formulation studies the same strategy can be used for the optimization of um uh, microwave assisted extraction condition you can use fractional factorial designs factorial designs and other statistical tool for optimization of various uh, operational condition just like pharmaceutics people they use a different optimization tool for the optimization of pre formulation studies i think you have got your answer you mean to say we have to go as per family to optimize yes yes you can say that you can say that to reduce your workload you can say that uh, if we have optimized uh, for a particular family then the, all the plants belonging to that family may follow that same optimum condition can be said sir possible optimization the response we can take as a percentage yield right sir yes 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 the response is the quantification of your biomarker okay okay, okay thank you sir in percentage yield cm farm students are asking good questions these are good sensible questions which indicates that you are thinking so don't don't be afraid to ask questions uh, sir am i audible yes yes uh, sir i am dr shantanu uh, yes. from kasem college uh, mm -hmm. sir i am uh, i was listening to you i am thinking one question that uh, first of all i give uh, i convey my i convey my regards and also the convey the Uh, Dr. Uh, Ajay Namdev from the Pune College of Pharmacy. He told me to convey the regards to you, sir. Okay, okay. I had gone there for a uh, similar lecture. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. So he told me. Uh, okay, sir. Sir, one question, sir. Uh, as you told that before the microwave assisted um, extraction process, we need to keep the drugs uh, macerated or uh, in uh, along with that uh, saturations with the mm -hmm. solvent for mm -hmm. some time. Hmm. Uh, my question is that is that also do matter which kind of solvents you are using one during that time there and also is that the temperature of that when you are keeping that drugs in that um, uh, in the solvents with the solvents that also will does matter after the after that when you are doing the extraction process for the timing and the temperature how much is required in the microwave assistance does that matter or does that interfere okay <clears throat> so your first was uh, um, i keep my drug macerated before uh, prior to microwave extraction fine now uh, you want to know uh, you have to keep your drug macerated in the same solvent which you are going to use for microwave and the same beaker you can same vessel you can uh, after uh, 10 minutes or 5 to 10 minutes of maceration the same setup you can insert in your microwave uh, cavity so <clears throat> uh, temperature definitely measures i have an ir sensor inbuilt ir sensor in my microwave uh, chamber and i uh, keep a temperature of around 70 degrees 70 or maybe 70s 80 depending on the type of phyto constituent that i am looking for Uh, um 70 to 80 degree i cut off temperature i i set so as soon as the internal system what is being heated up reaches to 80 degrees it will cut off the microwave will shut down hmm. so uh, temperature definitely matters you have to control the temperature thank you there are many factors so Vivekan one by one so every Vivekan factors and, need to be optimized vivekanand what is the range of temperature you can operate then I mean, uh, you said seventy, eighty, ninety. What is the range? No, uh, range means depends upon the phyto constituents. I generally That's do fine. not. I mean, in your in your micro oven, how much you can set? What is the range? From what range to what range you can set? Okay, uh, you want to uh, know the uh, range of temperature? Then. No, I, I was very you know happy to find out that you can actually fix a temperature of seventy, eighty, sixty, or yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. you want with microwave i mean you can control the microwave temperature and it's a, a mm -hmm. product of, i mean the heat produced by microwave so what is the range say you can start from 50 to 100 or 120 or what is that 
150 yeah okay hmm. Okay. I can set up to one fifty, but one fifty is not absolutely desirable. Yeah. So your your fabricator or your collaborator, he can set it up. Uh, I mean, IR sensor he can put and he can give a thermostat for yeah. that, right? Yes, absolutely. So I will be very interested in that. You know, in other words, you are telling that for various range of temperature, you can actually set and carry out micro oven synthesis. Yes, absolutely. But one of my worries whether you can control the temperature or not. We yeah. can surely control the temperature. Yes, yes, right, right. Thank you. See what microwave will do. With microwave is just like hammering the cell wall of the plant. It will continuously hammer the cell right. wall, right. and it will break the cell wall. But normally, you know, because of this attrition, the temperature rises. You know, if it yes, can yes. be controlled, it will be great. And there is a sharp rise in temperature that is, uh, yes. and that sharp rise in temperature will degrade your cellulose, and then uh, you know. Uh, your constituents will start coming out. So uh, it is preferable that you work at a low microwave power. Correct. Correct. We, you work with a low microwave power so that the, any there are no chances of degradation. High microwave power means there will be a rapid shoot up in temperature. Yeah. Yes. La last question from my side is how long you are using this microwave? The manufacturer. See, it is not about the extraction. Sorry. Uh, I being a principal, I want to give this equipment to my researchers. How mm -hmm. long are what is the lifetime? Does it work for three, four years, or just like many microns going for that? After one year, it goes. You know, even if you buy eleven lakhs worth from those suppliers, simply it goes off. You know, our experience was couple of microns are bad. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'll answer it. I had purchased the first one in two thousand and fourteen. Huh. Working fine. Absolutely fine. Okay. The second model I had purchased in 2017. That's a higher version. And the design was my design. I had given him the design based on my requirements. And this design is extraction without using solvent. And it is still working fine. Okay. See, fine. small uh, technical glitches will come. Yeah, okay. hmm. But uh, no, uh, we had once we had faced a breakdown. Okay. Hmm. But then he was quick to respond and he immediately had sent an engineer and uh, he got that uh, repaired. So if the machine runs, uh, there will be technical glitches, but he is quick to respond. Yeah, that's but it, I mean, it's still working. Or, yes, yeah. But if you like keep it idle without running, we run the microwave every day. There is heavy load on us. My yeah. students are working, other students are working, even, you know, chemistry department people, they come that we want some exposure, we are preparing some chemical synthesis, something like that, yes. we need uh, some exposure, uh, pharmaceutics people, they come they, uh, while preparing silver nanoparticles, yeah. there also some microwave exposure is required, so uh, it's huge load, so every day we are running, yeah. so, and we have uh, ensured everything, we have a stabilizer, we have good earthing, all these protections are required to you know lengthen the life of the instrument so you you have said you have designed the second one 2017 it is your own design yeah uh, the design is mine if i ask uh, i want a similar one you will be charging me for the charge or something like that <laughs> no 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 no, no. <laughs> i have i said my requirements to the manufacturer he manufactured it uh, for me and he can sell it to anybody uh, i am sure that you can help me to uh, get a good uh, versatile uh, uh, this one, micro yeah. one. But sir, actually the you know you will get the machine fine, but the machine is not going to run on its own. The yeah, machine does true. not have an artificial intelligence. That's true. You you need to develop your concepts and strategies, and then you need to operate it. Okay. Hmm. No, right now we are kind of what is happening is whenever we say micro one synthesis, we go and buy whatever is available in the market. More or less. Mm -hmm. So we we don't say these are the things, these are the specifications, and uh, uh, you you are telling that you have got more than ten years of experience, and because of your experience, you said uh, what are the things will be basic requirement, like you mentioned that regulation of temperature, putting IR sensors, so on and so forth. Uh, I am sure that I can make use of uh, your knowledge you have acquired over a period of time. I don't have to reinvent the wheel again to put, uh, try to find out. You are mm -hmm. certainly able to help me out to get a versatile, you know, uh, my, my, our usage will be definitely pharmacognosive friends of mine would like to extract some of the things. As you have correctly mentioned, some of the pharma chemistry people would like to do some small synthesis as well. And also nanoparticles, uh, you know, so take, I mean, a sort of versatile thing which uh, I will be very eager to uh, procure. 
and maybe you will able you will be of great help for me to procuring such things yes yes that's it procurement is okay it all depends on finance but then conceptualization um strategy building uh all these things uh, understanding its application where i can insert it where i can apply it um all that requires intellectual work hmm. yeah so we can have some collaboration you know uh, some uh, hands on workshop in the near future and some uh, training can be given to the faculty members and students is it okay we are can if i send uh, one of those people who are organized to your place yeah that's fine no problem some uh, paperwork would be involved uh, yeah. and um, uh, somebody wants to come here for a training um, yeah. can do so yeah training and understanding the things and what they want and something like that isn't it mm -hmm. so for a week or so if uh, some of those people can come uh, dr santanu or somebody can come there and understand the things before actually we go for that yeah we can work out on that plan not an issue yeah, yeah that's fine thank you sir i can interfere sir Certainly. sir is that uh, advanced version you are talking is that uh, used for the isolation of volatile oil is it yes yes it is used for extraction of volatile oil extraction of uh, aqueous juices sir uh, we have basic setup of micro extractor same thing from shrikant we have purchased one year back he was telling that uh, that can be updated for isolation of volatile oil and uh, i should say sir we uh, when i was in m for my uh, project work is on microwave only and we referred your uh, review article what you have published in pharmacocracy magazine that time when it was just in 2007 it was so published in, uh, it was published in 2007 it was yeah. written in 2006 yeah our m farm colleagues did uh, major that time uh, same project uh, m farm i mean uh, microwave and optimization of different plants so i, I should say that i have uh, uh, means referred you are article only that time it, because it, it was same new it was the first article on microwave yeah, yeah. written by any indian author and i was an m farm first year student at that time yes sir yes at banaras sir. university uh, yes sir yes sir thank you any questions yeah thank you everyone now i request hod department of pharmacognosy to take over the charge uh so first of all uh, i should thank our uh, eminent speaker of today is dr vivekanand mandal who was uh, kind enough to uh, to spend his time and as soon as we approached him he was very happy to share his knowledge thank you very much sir uh, for your uh, time and uh, your uh, uh, sharing your knowledge uh, i i hope that uh, uh, students will be definitely benefit and uh, they will do uh, future uh, work on this microwave and uh, you will also guide us when it is required thank you sir Uh, and uh, my uh, sincere thanks goes to our principal uh, dr c s shastri for his uh, uh, support for uh, organizing this uh, uh, guest lecture and uh, i also thank uh, my department colleagues uh, for uh, helping me to uh, organize this uh, guest lecture uh, and also uh, authorities of nitya university especially it department for making a platform for this guest lecture in online mode <laughs> Uh, last but not least i am also thankful for all the participants staff as well as the students for their patient listening thank you one and all uh, uh can, can uh, i say something uh yes yeah, sir yeah uh well i request the uh, organizers uh, um, yes sir uh, since you are a component of nit uh, nit university and your university will definitely Uh, uh will be facing uh, nac accreditation in uh, cycle different cycles yes. so please and since this webinar is related to skill development i am also the nac uh, officer in my university since it is related to skill development uh, through this lecture your skill related to botanical extraction is getting developed uh, i request you to you know everybody to switch on your videos take a screenshot prepare a report of this uh, webinar who gave the lecture who was the resource person uh, what was the topic how many participants were there keep it documented it will be helpful for you in your nb accreditation and in your nac accreditation that is our routine process sir we always does that 
so, yeah, so uh, you you can so you can, uh, you can request all the participants to switch on their camera divya yeah yeah uh, students sir yeah who are it is i mean i know yeah. something are on youtube who are is uh, there uh, you can have a, a screenshot and other data you can share it with vivekanand all how yeah, you have attempted a report and other things you can yeah, sir. share it yeah yes yeah uh, uh, are you going to take the screenshot now divya or uh, you have already taken hello hello sir sir uh, we will take the screenshot along with the speaker also uh, now you are doing it no yes yes, yes. So uh, earlier wait. also i have taken one and yeah, now also i will wait that's why otherwise i will uh, sign off uh i think uh, can we close the session then i need to rush back to my office yes sir uh, yeah, thank you very much we will sign off from here thank you very much we are done i meet you kindly kindly uh, uh, if i finish my thank you, thank you sir on behalf of uh, uh, all the participants and uh, ngsm institute sir thank you sir thank you sir yes sir yes sir uh, can, <laughs> can you present the uh, certificate uh, yes sir yes sir I am unable to post disabled uh, participant from Sherry University. We'll uh, uh, we'll share a certificate. We'll share a certificate uh, via mails. Yeah, yeah. You share it now. You don't have to. Right now, you don't have to do it. You yes, ensure sir. that yes. it reaches the all the participants. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And also ensure that the report. and uh, with the attendance and other things also copy goes to uh, dr mandal right yes sir yes uh, make, make the cycle complete okay i know yes. uh, uh, dr mandal we are nak a plus uh, institution mm -hmm. so we we uh, the, the system is in place i am sure that pavitra and team will uh, do the needful as yeah. desired by you right sir thank you very much i'll sign off with your permission thank you thank you sir